Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. Last Tuesday, I got a call that my mother died. And she was 95, and she was in the rehab section of a nursing home. And in those kinds of circumstances, it's not really out of the uh, ordinary that someone in those uh, in that situation would would die. <clears throat> and there's been a lot of activity. Johnson and I were discussing some of it all. There's everything from arranging a funeral and letting people know to cutting up credit cards. Um, and I'm not saying this to, you know, gather any sympathy from anyone, but one of the things that uh, I bring up from time to time uh, in the vein of paying attention uh, has to do with when a loved one uh, passes on. And one of the things that I say is that you could either go all heart sutra on them and say no birth, no death, no coming, no going, or you could go to the other side and, you know, just like pat them on the back and say whatever it is that's appropriate at that moment. Oops, sorry. So uh, since I was dealing with a lot of this myself, I, of course, got to think about what approach to take with myself. And I found it strangely comforting to go down the Heart Sutra side of things. Form is empty and is empty to form with no spaces in between them. No coming, no going, no birth, no death. And the fact that that seemed to console me in some regard, I found sort of interesting. I'm not an excessively sentimental person. Uh, can be very, I don't know, seemingly aloof sometimes. But it's not that I'm aloof, it's just that a lot of things don't bother me that might bother other people. And maybe that's a result of these years of practice where it's a natural thing to just sit back and, and watch the thoughts and see where they're going and then let them go there. But uh, it was all worth, worth uh, the price of admission, let's say, although that's probably a really weird way to put it. <clears throat> um, so a number of things came up. First, the uh, form emptiness, emptiness form thing. Uh, feelings, perceptions, impulses, consciousness, all being characterized by emptiness, uh, things not appearing or disappearing, not tainted or pure, not increasing or decreasing. It, it hit home. You know, we can chant the Heart Sutra every week, and it's it's a chant. And I'm not a person who says you have to particularly understand the words of a chant for the chant to be effective. 
chanting in a sangha, trying to keep up with everybody, follow the beat of the mutta. That's all good in and of itself. That's why I don't mind chanting in Korean because it doesn't matter. I'm paying attention. I'm following the mukta. I'm trying not to race ahead or fall behind. I'm doing my best to actually pronounce the words correctly, although sometimes that doesn't quite work out. But in this case, all those times I've chanted the Heart Sutra, now it came home. It meant something. It actually landed. It's always great when one of the teachings actually comes into play, when you actually get to use it instead of just sort of, you know, contemplating it or uh, ruminating about it. This was a real, right there, uh, appliance application of the uh, Heart Sutra in, uh, in what I was dealing with. And I'm glad I had the practice. I'm glad I had something uh, in my background that could be of some consolation. Um, death is not easy. You know, there are times when I will still uh, look at the telephone and check to see if there's any messages. Um, you know, it came up that there are a number of questions that uh, had never gotten asked and consequently will now never be answered. Her sister, my mother's sister, my aunt, uh, died in 1997. And I wasn't living here at the time. So we came up, three sons, myself, their mother. And, you know, it was the standard issue. There's a wake, there's a funeral you know, funeral mass in this case, and then the actual uh, burial. And the, uh, the wake was held in the funeral home. And I think by nature, people tend to be quiet at those things. Occasionally there'll be some goings on, but in this case, there really weren't. And my youngest at that time was four years old-ish. And in one of those times when uh, nobody had actually asked for a moment of silence, but it was pretty close to being that, my youngest, walks up to the open casket and yells, wake up! In his inimitable way. And we talk about that a lot too. What are we waiting for? Birth and death are right here. They're the front of your hand and the back of your hand. There's no separation. So what are you waiting for? What am I waiting for? Let's get on with this. Wake up! 